today we are going to see the various needs and different modes of interventions for children with autism. The individual needs of the child with autism need to be thoroughly assessed in order to provide the services effectively the initial diagnosis combined with an understanding of the family need to be taken into consideration. At this point you should become clearer as to which approach or approaches and strategies will be most useful for that particular child. At all times practitioners and parents should remember that every child with autism will have different needs. So, one blanket program for all children with autism will not be appropriate. One should understand the unique needs of an autistic child. The unique needs of an autistic children are environmental consideration, visual and auditory stimulation in the classroom must be taken into consideration. Many students with autism are sensitive to auditory input and have more difficult time in processing auditory stimulation. Their workstation should be placed away from excessive auditory stimulation and away from unnecessary movement. The next one is visual schedule. Planned activities can be charted in a visual form and posted at or near the desk of the students with autism spectrum disorder so that they can understand the changes in activities and know what to expect. A student may require a number of mini schedules throughout the day. The student can be helped to learn to use the schedules independently. Staff can direct the students to the schedules when it is time to change activities. The next one is visual structure. The environment needs to be structured visually to help the students clearly see and understand what is expected of him. Workstations must be clearly defined. Some students will need three sided workstations while others will be able to work in more open areas. Tapped outlines on the floor, chairs, labeled with the student's name or using furniture to reduce visual and auditory stimulations or examples of environmental consideration. Workstations also need to be structured. Activities should be designed with strong visual cues and so less auditory directions are needed. Each station also need to be clearly show what need to be done, how much need to be done when the student finishes and what's next. Alternative to verbal communication. Many students with autism have impairments in communication, particularly expressive communication. For those who are nonverbal, an argumentative communication system must be in place. The picture exchange communication system has been very effective. Voice output communication devices may be very appropriate for those students who do have verbal communication skills may benefit from having some form of argumentative communication available as a backup system for times when expressive communication may fail them. It is very common for students to be unable to access verbal communication when in a stressful emotional state. Having a backup visual form of communication can assist with the expression and reduce aggressive behavior. Example, communication board which includes small pictures with words to complex sentence. Next is direct instruction of social skills. The majority of students with autism need direct instruction in social skills. Most do not learn interaction skills by simply being placed in social environments. They need to learn social interaction skills in the same way they learn from other academic skills. Using strong visual structures, activities can be designed to teach about identifying emotions in self and others. Situations that can cause certain emotions and how to respond in certain social situations. Social stories have been found to be very useful. They are short stories written about specific social situations that briefly describe a social situation. How others may respond 
in this situation and how the student should respond. The next one is literacy instruction because many students with autism rely on some form of argumentative communication even if it is only a backup literacy instruction is very important. Argumentative communication means supplementing or replacing speech or writing by those who are unable to use verbal speech to communicate. If a student is literate, he or he will be able to communicate at a much higher level than if the child is forced to depend on communication devices that are programmed with limited vocabulary. Literary instruction should begin at a very early age and continue throughout all school years. The next one is consistency. All students do best when the daily program remains consistent with the clear expectations. All staff working with students with autism need to be well trained and must implement the daily program as consistently as possible. Sensory opportunities. Most students with autism have some sensory needs. Many show deep pressure or very relaxing. Others need frequent opportunities for movement. All students should have a sensory profile completed by an occupational therapist or other professionals trained in sensory integration. Based on a profile, a sensory diet can be created and implemented throughout the day. Functional curriculum. Children with autism have a great deal of potential to live and work independently as adults. The curriculum should place a strong emphasis on a following a functional curriculum. Skills that emphasize daily living skills, community skills, recreation and leisure and employment need to be incorporated into the curriculum. Students in inclusive setting can follow the regular curriculum, but emphasis should be placed on those skills that are most functional. Functional academics should always include literacy that is reading and writing, basic math, time and money skills, self-care skills, domestic recreation and community experiences. Older students should have formal employment opportunities beginning in middle school. Take advantage of student strength and interest. Many students with autism have a particular strength and interest and these should be taken in advantage of in the classroom. For example, if a student demonstrates an interest in trains, the student should have opportunities to read about trains, write about trains, do max problems about trains. When teaching in an inclusion class, it is important to involve every child. Learning some simple tips for encouraging autistic students to participate can be helpful. Children with autism have difficulties communicating and poor social skills. As there is a large spectrum of symptoms that falls on the autistic scale, the severity of the disability can vary widely between two different students. Even so, there are some generalities that will help teachers include these students more in the classroom. Next, we have to see daily classroom routines for autistic students. Students with autism thrive on a predictable routine. When something unexpected happens, an autistic child has difficulty in coping and may demonstrate some stereotypical autistic symptoms such as rocking and repeating the same word or phrase. This repetition is calming and efforts should may be made to gently teach the child how to cope up with changes in the routine. Have the classroom routine written down so that the teacher can refer to the schedule often throughout the day. Having a schedule tab to the student's desk may help as well. This may the child can look at the schedule himself and know what is coming next. This is especially helpful when the schedule changes. Providing the student a written schedule will help them and cope from one activity to another. Reduce the distractions in the classroom. Minimizing the excess stimulus in the classroom will help prevent the student with autism from becoming overwhelmed. It is easier to process one thing at a time. And when there is too much going on, either visually or audibly, it can cause the students to shut down and resort to calming techniques. When the students seem to become overwhelmed, quiet the class, slow down the pace of the activity 
or allow the student to move to a quiet area of the room to calm down and continue working. Reducing the noise and clutter in the classrooms can help. Simple teaching strategies for autistic students. Ask simple questions and instead of giving open ended questions and provide options. How do you go to school? By bus, car, scooter or by auto. Remember to give more wait time than usual for the students to answer a question and be sure to use vocabulary that the child understands. This may mean using simple words or defining words as you go on. Reward questions instead of repeating the same question if the student does not understand or does not respond. Remember that the child may take longer to process a request and may be hesitant to try something new. When speaking to the child, work on getting to the child to make eye contact. Do as much concrete teaching as possible instead of requiring the student to draw an inference. Be sure to involve all the child senses in the learning process. Working with an autistic student in an inclusive setting has its challenges. Patience is a huge key in helping the child to be successful by setting a routine, reducing distractions and implementing some simple teaching strategies, an autistic child will be able to participate more and learn more in the class. An intervention is any kind of activity that is designed to improve the quality of life for people on the autism spectrum disorder. Some interventions can be quite simple and straightforward. For example, if someone finds a specific situation difficult, you can change the situation. For example, if a child finds difficulty as being in a noisy environment, we can change by reducing the noise in the room. Interventions can be broadly classified as LOVAS, Behavioral Intervention, Psychological Intervention, Sunrise Program, Motor Intervention, Augmentative and Alternative Communication, Assistive and Adaptive Technology, Malatons, Art Therapy, Drama and Dance Therapy, Play Therapy, Music Therapy and Dietary and Vitamin Treatments. So, we will see the th interventions one by one. Now, let us see LOVAS. The LOVAS is a program based on behavioral theory. The children are likely to repeat the learned behaviors that are positively rewarded and less likely to repeat behaviors that are negatively rewarded. It is a form of applied behavior analysis in which the trainer models to the child a skill to be mastered. Such a placing one block on top of another and then encourage the child to repeat. This needs a qualified trainer who need to sit opposite to the child. Eye contact is required using prompting and the request for the child to complete the task is repeated until success is achieved. Success is always rewarded with the favored food and activity. It is usually undertaken in the home by a team of trained lowers workers who will regularly work with the child. The activities are highly structured and would be planned individually for the child. Reports suggest that many children achieve considerable success within the program and some are able to proceed to mainstream provisions. The next one is behavioral intervention. Behavioral interventions are designed to encourage appropriate behavior such as getting dressed or talking to others and to discourage in appropriate behavior such as hand banging or aggression towards others. Therapists teachers or parents break down the desired behavior into small achievable tasks which are then thought in a very structured manner. The next one is psychological intervention. Psychological intervention include a wide range of intervention based on psychology which is the scientific study of human mind and behavior. That means how we think, feel, act and interact individually and in groups. Psychological intervention includes talking therapies that is counseling, creative therapies such as art therapy and cognitive therapy, biomedical interventions. The therapy is designed to stop or at least reduce the effect of biomedical problems such as gastrointestinal abnormalities, immune dysfunction, detoxification abnormalities, nutritional deficiencies or imbalance. Biomedical problem acts as triggers 
which cause or at least exacerbate many of the problems faced by the people with autism. The problem can be solved or reduced by following one or more biomedical interventions. Next is the Sunrise Program. The Sunrise Program was developed by Kaufman in the year 1974 in America for his own son and it was used from about 18 months. A separate playroom was developed for the program to work on. The playroom should be totally free from distraction and totally child focused. A drastic improvement was seen in the child after the introduction of this intervention. This mode of intervention was based on the principle of helping the child to learn what he or she wants to learn as opposed to what others may want him to learn of what is perceived to be needed is fundamental. The mentor will undertake a range of activities combining by following the children's own lead and participating in whatever they are doing and encouraging the child to participate in adult selected activities. Both the child and the mentor are observed through a two-way mirror and the mentor meet regularly to plan future activities. This will enable the child to adapt to other settings and environment. The next one is motor intervention. Motor intervention refers to any treatment and therapies which make use of or which aim to improve motor functioning or movements of the whole body or parts of the body. Sensory interventions offer to any treatments and therapies which make use of or which aim to improve sensitivity to one or more of the senses. Now let us see about the augmentative and alternative communication. It is a form of communication that people use if they are unable or unwilling to use standard form of communication such as speech. Alternative communication system are designed to replace standard means of communication. Now let us see about assistive and adaptive technology. Assistive and adaptive technology refers to any products, devices or equipments that are used to maintain, increase or improve the functional capabilities of individuals with autism. The next technique is Mechaton. Mechaton enables a child to communicate who has no other form of communication. It is a basic signing system with each sign having a matching line drawn to a pictorial support. It is mainly used in the young autistic children. Next is the art therapy. Art therapy is a way of expressing oneself and of communicating in a safe way where there are no correct or incorrect answer. Example, sensory experience was clearly being enjoyed in this therapy. This therapy will be successful in both social interaction and communication as well as being an enjoyable, creative and sensory experiences. Now let us see about drama and dance therapy. The session should be planned to include more structured elements. This therapy will aid in the development of social interaction and communication but will also benefit physical skills. The sensory aspect of experience will also benefit the child with autism. Next we are going to see an important therapy that is play therapy. Once barrier to interaction is overcome, play based learning for children with autism can be given. Even though this approach is useful, knowledge regarding difficulties is also essential. The difficulties include use of senses, example licking and tasting when exploring items, stereotypical and rigid play patterns. Their focus will be on exploring unusual part of playing and longer period of time spent, lack of direct eye contact, example using peripheral vision to see the items, lack of attention and concentration on adult led activities, lack of imaginative play, tendency to repeat learn play pattern. Those difficulties show the children with autism need to be taught to play. Through play we can teach imitation, turn taking, social interaction and cognitive skills. Music therapy. Music therapy enables interaction and communication through music and the use of musical instruments. It will be helpful to develop skill in turn taking. Music therapy helps in developing eye contact, self-awareness, feelings, 
and emotions and establish a relationship between the child and the therapist. This approach will be a non-confrontational and non-threatening situation for the child. It will help the child to gain self-awareness which will enable them to respond more readily in everyday social interaction. Dietary and vitamin treatments. Some children with autism experience certain food allergies or intolerance often with wheat and dairy products. Some children have a tendency to difficulties with the digestion and bowels leading to constipation or diarrhea. Children with autism can often have problems with food due to their taste, texture and smell sensitivities. Researches undertaken by researchers in India and abroad suggest that a gluten and dairy free diet has resulted considerable benefits particularly for those at the more severe end of the spectrum. So, from this we have seen what are the various needs of children with autism and the different modes of intervention that can be given for children with autism. So, these two are important aspects in rehabilitating children with autism. Thank you. Thank you.